Hello everyone, I am Steph Bodrini and this podcast is for everyone who wants to learn commercial real estate investing from A to Z. I'll be sharing with you my daily journey in getting into real estate while being mentored by someone who has been doing retail real estate investing for the last 20 plus years. And my goal is to keep things very straightforward because we don't have time nowadays, and you're here to learn. With that, in the last episode, we learned the questions that you should be asking a seller's real estate agent when you are interested in a property that is for sale. In this episode, I'll go over in detail on why I decided to focus on commercial properties and not residential properties. And I have to thank a few friends, in particular Mike and Fernando, who were brave enough to listen to my first few podcasts and asked me to explain why I decided to do commercial investments instead of residential. So today I'll explain that to you in detail on why I picked commercial. But before I do that, I want you to learn that there are many types of investments that fall under residential and commercial. First, I'm going to share with you what types of properties fall under residential investments. And then later, I'll share with you what types of properties fall under commercial investments. So let's start with residential. Residential are properties where people live in. That's where people have their beds and their pillows to sleep on at night. So it's not only single family homes, but it's also duplexes, triplexes, fourplexes, mobile home parks, multifamily properties like apartment buildings, high rises, lofts, student housing, and senior housing. And each of these categories have their own pros and cons. Also, under each of these categories, you can have a good or a bad investment, depending on the state that you invest in, because of things like property prices, the local economy, do we have more people coming in than going out, do we have apartments being built, do we have a lot of vacancy or not, as well as state and city laws. For example, some states have laws that benefit the tenants and you cannot kick them out. Some states have laws that benefit the property owners. So if a tenant doesn't pay the rent, they are out of the property in days. And that's not California, by the way. So now that you know what a residential investment is, let's move into what falls under commercial property. Number one, industrial. And within industrial, you could have a distribution center, warehousing, or manufacturing. Number two, office. You can have a regular office where you lease it out to several companies, lawyers, etc. Or you could have, for example, a medical office building where you lease it to a hospital or just doctors like dentists, dermatologists, psychologists, etc. Number three, retail. Within retail, you can have a single tenant building. For example, in the city that you live in, you have a very cute downtown area and you can own one of those buildings And in that building, you can lease it out to a coffee shop, for example, or to a restaurant. So that's a single tenant retail. Another type of retail is the small neighborhood service center, like the places that have about five to 10 tenants where you go to the dry cleaner and there's also a nail salon or a cash advance business depending on (laughs) which area of the city that is. And another type of retail can be a strip mall with around 20 to 40 tenants, for example, like a place where you have the grocery uh, store. So that would be called the anchor tenant. And you also have a bank as a tenant, for example. You have some food places like Burger King, a Starbucks, etc. Or it can also be a big box shopping center where 
you have a Target, a Macy's, a Sears, if they're not all out of business by then, a food court, etc. Number four, storage units. This is where people pay you a monthly fee to keep things that they'll never need in your building. And within storage, you could focus on storing things like wine, for example, because some people like to collect wine, but they don't have a lot of space at home to have a temperature-controlled storage in their own homes. Another idea is, if you have a lot of courage, you could store gold for people. And number five, land. You could lease your land to all kinds of businesses. For example, for agricultural purposes, to wind farms, for RVs to stay for a few days, for truck drivers to park their trucks when they are on the road, and many other things. Now that you know all kinds of investments you could focus on, let me explain why I decided to focus on commercial and specifically in retail and office. Although I'm pretty open at this moment, I could potentially do storage or even warehousing uh, industrial. So why commercial and not residential? First and foremost, part of it is that I don't like dealing with people. And yes, you can have a property manager deal with people for you, but I really just don't want to be in that world. Over my career in sales, I realized that when people are paying for anything out of their own pocket, they get a lot more sensitive <laughs> and that can lead to more complaints and upset people and negative reviews online than when their company is paying for something. So that's one of the reasons why I picked commercial, because I'll be dealing with people that are working within a corporation and they probably won't take things to heart as much as someone paying out of their own pocket. Also, I live in beautiful California, where the tenant basically rules. If they don't pay rent, it can take months to get them out of your building and the state of California will very likely implement rent control statewide. Rent control laws are getting passed in several cities here in California, and it's just a matter of time when the entire state has rent control laws. And just so you know, I recently met a couple that owns quite a few single-family homes in California, and they told me that they will be selling all of their homes as soon as their tenant leaves just because of rent control laws. Secondly, I also just landed in commercial real estate by chance because my mentor has been investing in retail for over 20 years, so that's what I have been learning from him. Other reasons for choosing commercial are triple net. Triple net means that your tenants will pay for property taxes, for your insurance, and common area maintenance, also known as CAM. C-A-M. And this doesn't happen in, in residential. You don't get triple net in residential properties. With commercial properties, you also get better tenants. You can get big companies such as Jack in the Box or a bank or a supermarket. And if you can get big tenants to lease from you, you can increase the value of your property significantly. Why? because these big companies are unlikely to go out of business and the rent is pretty much guaranteed to come in. So the next investor buying your commercial property values that big tenant that will end up actually paying rent and not go out of business. Another reason, commercial tenants also sign longer leases. Commercial leases can be anywhere from 10 to 20 years and sometimes even more. And yes, there are yearly price increases that are negotiated on those leases. And these leases typically start to get increased after year five. As a conclusion, part of it can be personal preference and most investors decide to focus on a specific area and they end up becoming experts in that area. However, some other investors like to adjust their strategy based on the market. For example, I recently met someone who has done multifamily investments for several, several years, but 
because the market is so hot with multifamily properties, these properties are super expensive. So he changed his strategy to retail because he can get a 2% higher return in retail than in multifamily projects. So you can be flexible on your strategy as well. And I would highly recommend that. Another example, my mentor recently purchased an office building, which I'm going to take credit that I found, <laughs> by the way. And he wanted to leverage his retail properties because there is a lot of fear in retail nowadays. Personally, I think that retail won't go away for many reasons, but they will be on sale when the economy takes a hit. And one of the reasons is because everyone is fearful of retail. So these property owners will be selling their retail properties. Also, it will be on sale as more and more big box stores like Sears <laughs> go out of business because of the internet. And uh, until these properties get repurposed for another use, I think you'll be able to find good deals in retail. Also, when the economy takes a hit, which a lot of people are predicting will happen anytime soon, and some people are saying it already started, we will have many, many, many opportunities to buy real estate. So if you are here learning all that you can prior to buying your next property, kudos to you because you will be ready to go on a shopping spree when the time arrives. And let me tell you, you can get a deal that will set you up for life when the economy takes a hit. So be prepared, get educated. Now is the perfect time to do that. I hope that this gives you clarity on why I personally picked commercial properties. And uh, if you are learning something, make sure to subscribe to this podcast. And if you could please, 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 do me a favor and write a review. I will be very, very grateful because only when we have enough good reviews, they will show our podcast on top when people search for commercial real estate advice. Thank you.